Hi, and welcome to Micro Moment Monday. And we need to talk about the Ball Blue Books. I know that I have hinted in one of our previous videos that something's up with them. Many of you have heard about that, little rumblings around. So what is the story, and can we still trust the Ball Blue Books? Well, here is what I know. The Iowa Extension Service, about a year ago, informed the 4-H groups that they no longer recommended the recipes in the Ball Blue Book and they could not use them for um, any kind of competition. And then earlier this year, they extended that to um, a, a broad announcement. And so what's happening in the Midwest, in Iowa, and in, at Penn State Extension and several others, is that they are now in their state fairs and county fairs no longer accepting um, submissions for the uh, home canning division of the fairs. Um, using recipes from the Ball Blue Books. And so a lot of people are upset. I'm upset um, until we know really what is going on. Um, it has kind of throw, thrown a um, curve at us. The extension services, the, the ones who are now no longer recommending the, blue, uh, the Ball Blue Books, have said there are essentially three reasons. First of all, Ball has changed hands over the years. And while they used to be very, very rigorous in their testing, they now are not sharing their testing protocols with anyone, and so nobody can check up on them to see whether or not their recipes are really safe. <clears throat> and so that's one thing, that the fact that they are not sharing their research with the extension offices so that they can review them. And then they have a couple of other excuses. One of them is that the some of the explanations are a little bit too wordy and some of the measurements aren't exactly precise. I think that the real heart of the matter is that the Ball Blue Books will not share their testing protocols. For whatever reason, I don't know. Uh, they have responded um, by saying how much they value the extension services and that they have worked with them for years. There are 23 of the 100 land-grant universities that have extensions that are connected to, to home canning and also provide us with recipes. And Ball says that it really values them and they wish to continue to work with them. They have invited people from the extensions to come into their facility to check things. <clears throat> but they're still being just a little bit vague about it. And they say that their testing is according to standards. They don't say what standards, which is one of the things. But the response from the extensions, one from the Iowa extension, uh, the person said, well, we are not the home preservation police. Well, you know what? It kind of seems that way to me. But they are, are couching it in the idea that it, they're, they're um, the reason for their existence is much broader than just home preservation of foods. So whatever, whatever, it's a little battle that is going on right now. And the bottom line for us, is it safe? Is it safe for us to continue to um, can using the recipes in the Ball Blue Book? So I took a little trip down memory lane. This is my very first Ball Blue Book. The cover is missing, 1975. And as I looked through this, um, there are little cooking spots on it. Things are circled. And I remember so fondly uh, in 1975 when I was deep into just learning how to do pressure canning. This is the 1995 Ball Blue Book. And there's a place in here, and I tried to find it this right before we started this video. But it said, you no longer need to use aspirin as a preservative in your canned goods. So I thought, woohoo, I don't ever remember that that one is, it was in place. And then um, this is the one that I recommended in our video on uh, what is happening in the world of pressure canning. And you can see how much I use it. I have bookmarks everywhere. So I have used a lot of the recipes in this book. A lot of our videos are built on recipes in this book. So Ball says that these recipes are safe. Are they? Well, I think they are. But here's the thing. Everyone is going to need to make their own decision on whether or not to use these recipes anymore until this situation gets resolved. The extensions are saying that the only thing that they now recommend is this book. This is the, um, I think this is the 2015. There is now a 2020 book out. Um, I'm not going to get the 2020. I've read about it. It's not that much changed from this. 
Um, but if this one is no longer available, then by all means get the 2020. Um, and this is the USDA's Complete Guide to Home Canning. It's the National Center for Home Food Preservation. And these recipes are the ones that are recommended. So here's how I'm going to do it. Um, I, I had a question actually yesterday from one of our subscribers, one of our viewers, who wanted to know about um, this recipe in the Ball Blue Book. And it is called Roasted Tomato Soup. So in reading over the directions, she had a question, and it's a very valid question because the directions here conflicted with some of the things that were in um, the uh, USDA material. Uh, what they have you do is take the tomatoes and all of the ingredients and do, cook them, and it calls for onions and tomatoes and basil and a whole lot of other things. And then after they are cooked, you run them through a blender um, to, to make a puree of the soup and then you uh, put it back in the pot to bring it up to temperature and then you can it. Now, um, I have not done this recipe. I've not done all the recipes in here. But this is one that I would choose to adjust. And I would adjust it to what the USDA says about this. USDA um, prefers that things are not in a viscous form, that they have chunks in them and that they are covered with a liquid so the heat penetration can get clear into the middle. So what I would do with that recipe, I would adjust it according to USDA standards, which is I would not run it through the blender until after I took it out of the jars, after it, we were ready to eat it, open up a jar, dump it in the blender, blend it, heat it up, and then do the other stuff with it. So if we just use our common sense, and if we have a little question about any of the recipes in the blue books, then we can double check it with similar recipes here or from the extension services, and uh, then we can reconcile those. Um, and by all means, everyone makes their own choices and, and um, don't do anything that you think is a little bit, um, if it you know, gives you that feeling in the pit of your stomach where you're really wondering, ooh, is this safe? You can either ask us or do your own research and find a tested recipe that is similar and then compare the processes to see. So that is my recommendation. I have not lost faith in the Ball Blue Books. I will still use them, but I may adjust them to better match with what the USDA says. So I hope that this has helped um, with the information about whether or not the, the Ball Blue Books are still credible which I think that they are, that we can rest easy and can move forward in our canning journey. So thanks, and I'll see you at our next Micro Moment.